Hey, what's up, people? Piz out here, and continuing my series, File 13, in which I discuss cult, sleaze, exploitation movies of every shape and size. Today, I want to talk to you guys about Toby Hooper's Eaten Alive. And before I start the video, I just want to say, um, forgive me if I sound a little rough, if I sound a little congested. I'm battling um, either a sinus infection or a touch of the flu or maybe a little bit of both. Um, so I'm kind of a little loopy on some cough medicine, so forgive me for that if I do, <laughs> if I do uh, trail off. But I could think of no better state of mind to discuss Toby Hooper's Eaten Alive than in this current state of mind. Because Toby Hooper's Eaten Alive is, to put it plainly, one of the most raw, uh, exploitative, um, <laughs> violent, crazy, um, out there movies you're probably ever going to see. Uh, Eaten Alive was Toby Hooper's follow-up to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and um, which, of course, I mean, as we all know, the Seminole Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, huge film, uh, made a lot of money. Uh, you know, a, a print of it is in the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, it was featured at the Director's Fortnight at Cannes. Uh, but even though it, it had all this buzz around it, you know, Toby Hooper's phone didn't ring um, except for Eaten Alive. And so it was kind of, you know, he was a gun for hire. It was a paycheck kind of gig. But he wanted to do something, you know, and, and he recognized, you know, yeah, this is pretty much straightforward you know, sleazy <laughs> exploitation, grindhouse, you know, drive-in kind of movie. What can I do to make it stand out from the pack? And he wanted to make a fairy tale through hell. He wanted to make, you know, Alice in Wonderland goes to hell. And so the film has, you know, while, while there's all this insanity going on in the film, we have this really weird color palette going on throughout the film as well. These deep reds and blues, and there's just smoke everywhere in this film. So you really, and, and it's constantly set at twilight, at this like weird magic hour. Like it, it, like this movie doesn't take place on Earth, and none of the characters in the film are really, you know, uh, every character in the film is crazy on their own kind of level. A uh, movie's about this sort of out-of-the-way hotel in the Texas Bayous, run by this fella named Judd, played by Neville Brand, who gives one of the most insane performances I've ever seen. Uh, Neville Brand's character, Judd, in Eaten Alive, is one of the most insane characters in movie history. Um, a complete and utter wacko. And people who sort of, you know, drift into his hotel, uh, most of them end up getting eaten alive by his pet crocodile who he keeps in this pool next to his hotel. And uh, during the course of this perpetual sort of twilight, um, a lot of people come and, you know, come into the hotel and uh, quite a few of them, he, he if they don't get eaten alive by his, uh, his, his crocodile, uh, they end up getting... Um, uh, cut to pieces and then fed to the crocodile by his scythe. Um, among the characters in the film, we have a young Robert England who plays Buck, and Buck is raring to, I'll let you fill in the blank there, we've got Marilyn Burns, the late Marilyn Burns who recently passed away, uh, rest in peace. Um, her character, her character's relationship with her husband in the film, the backstory there could be its own completely insane movie their relationship in just the maybe 10 minutes that they're on screen is insane um to say the least um just some wacky wacky stuff going on there um you've got a really good cast in the film a lot of really good actors in the movie that that really sort of help out because the movie really the, the, the movie doesn't make a lick of sense. <laughs> and, and I don't think it's supposed to. Um, and it's it's one of those movies that you just kind of have to let wash over you. And just kind of experience. Because it's that kind of movie. It's a complete trip. I mean, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was weird and trippy and out there. But it sort of had 
uh, focus to it. This movie is ten times trippier, ten times weirder, and absolutely no focus. It's all over the place, but <laughs> I'm recommending it nonetheless. Um, I also thought about uh, featuring uh, Eaten Alive on my other series, The Lost, which I'm doing right now, in which I talk about more obscure, lesser-known movies that I think deserve to be seen. Because it's kind of when you talk about Toby Hooper movies, you know, of course, Texas Chainsaw dominates uh, the discussion. You know, you talk about Poltergeist, The Fun House. Life Force, you know, movies like that. You don't really talk about Eating Alive. And Eating Alive, I mean, as a follow-up to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, is kind of a disappointment because Texas Chainsaw Massacre is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And Eating Alive is not anywhere on the same plane as Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like I said, incredibly raw. It, it seems even more atavistic um, than Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I'm not sure if there was... Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure what was going on behind the scenes or anything like that, uh, but it looked even lower budge than Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, incredibly exploitative, um, just incredibly violent, super sleazy, um, just, just really, really out there, a wild movie. Uh, but I do enjoy it. I've seen it a few times. I think it's definitely something that you guys should check out if you get the opportunity to, just so you can say, yeah, I've seen Eaten Alive. I've seen... One of the craziest, <laughs> most nonsensical, um, just whacked out movies ever. And um, so, yeah, anyway, uh, my thoughts on Toby Hooper's Eaten Alive. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you've seen the movie, please let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. And uh, until next time, take it easy. Peace.